and joining us now on the debate. Patty Torsney, former MP for 12 years in the riding of Burlington. Joe Jordan, former member of parliament for seven years in the riding of Leeds Grenville. Ken Boschkoff, former MP for four years in the riding of Thunder Bay Rainy River. George Taylor, former MPP for eight years in the riding of Simcoe Center. And Francis Campouras, career counselor and CEO of Redville Strategies for Transitions. Good to have everybody around the table here in our TVO studios. Nice to see you all. I want to uh, talk about, um, well, I guess you all know this. You, you, you're not loved, right? You all know this, right? <laughs> Politicians are very unloved. Uh, so maybe some people will be asking why we're we doing a program that sort of focuses on why we should care about them after their careers are over, but that's what we do. So, Joe, start us off. How did you get into the business of career counseling for ex-politicians? Kind of backed into it. I, uh, I, I come from a very political family. My uh, father was an MP. My grandfather actually ran in the 20s unsuccessfully. So I, um, I got into politics, I'd like to think, with my eyes open in terms of, of what it meant and, and uh, what it involved. And served seven years and, and uh, loved every minute of it. I was defeated in 2004. Uh, and I, in 2000, I should back up, I, I won an election by 55 votes to the Alliance Party. So when the right united, uh, you were you know, toast. I was pretty, you know, uh, pretty sure the resume was going to have to come into play. Uh, so I was ready. I thought I was ready for it. I wasn't unemployed an hour uh, in the process. And I still found it hard. Uh, there were still certain aspects uh, uh, of uh, it. Uh, that I was concerned about. I mean, would I feel comfortable walking around Parliament Hill, uh, this sort of thing. Um, and I had had some dealings with Pay and Benefits, who is the, is the um, department within the House of Commons that, that deals with defeated MPs. Um, and I casually mentioned to them uh, before the 2006 election that, you know, I was up the street now working in government relations capacity, and if they had any MPs that they thought could benefit from a cup of coffee, give me a call not really thinking that that would amount to much, and it, and it did. I, I ended up, they, they sent about six or seven people to me, and I carried on dialogue. Because people are not dialogue. prepared for post-political life. Uh, essentially. Too many. Yeah, yeah. and, and to make, to make a, a, a long story short, um, I, I saw the need to do something, but I realized personally I didn't have the, the expertise to know exactly what to do. Well, that lady beside you does. How did you come into this? I heard Joe speak on the radio in uh, on the CBC talking uh, on the house and uh, he told a really compelling story about the need for this and this is what I do professionally. I work with executives and entrepreneurs, athletes who are leaving their job or taking on a new job, any kind of big transition. So I called Joe uh, the Monday after I heard him and said I can help. And, and, and uh, relatively speaking, how well or ill prepared for post political life are most politicians you run into? Uh, quite ill prepared. Ill prepared. Mm -hmm. Now that goes against everything we think, which is that from the second they get in there, they're networking, making contacts, making sure that as soon as they're not in the job they have, they're all set to go. It's a very different world. It's a very different world that they're leaving and going back into. So some of them have you know, been attorneys or they've been in a family business and um, heading into politics is very, very different. And I don't think any of them, th you know, I don't think you should be thinking about leaving office when you're in office. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of all or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, George, let me bring you in because uh, you were a lawyer in Barrie. Yes. You got elected to Queen's Park, got into cabinet, were solicitor general, and then in 19, what was it, 85, you decided not to run again? Uh, somebody else made that decision for me. I was asked to leave by Premier Miller. Uh, oh, you time. and Frank didn't get on, eh? No, we not quite seeing eye to eye. Okay, but the, in other words, the voters didn't tell you to leave. It was the Premier who no, told you to leave. But, but it's the same thing. It's a public firing. Okay. You're, you think you're loved, but you're not. And, <laughs> and, and when you and went back to Barry, what was the status of your law firm? It was gone, basically. The two fellows had uh, moved on, and they had sold the law firm, so I had to start all over again. So basically, you were coming out of a very heated arrangement, active, and starting a brand new law practice. Laws changed, uh, people have changed, your clients have moved on. You're still looked on very much always as a politician. You can't get that wash off. So you're thrown out and said, here you are. So I had to have money, need to do it, so off I went and started my law practice. You started oh, up again? Started again. At what age? Uh, that would be about 50, just about 50. Started from scratch at 50. Right. So you're competing with the young 25s. You're also eight years out of uh, law, eight years out of even things of a mechanical nature change. The procedures have changed. The uh, fax machines, if you can think they're 
uh, everywhere now. Mm -hmm. They were just coming in. Then the computers came in, and uh, the registry system changed. All your law became computerized. Was All it tough? Oh, yes, it was tough. Uh, and plus, it takes a while to build up a, a practice. You just mm -hmm. you don't put the shingle out and people run with money. It's, it's a very, it was a very trying time. I used up all my RSPs formulating uh, the business and uh, starting again. You don't get any severance pay. Well, you, uh, you did have a pension little. though, right? You had a pension uh, from Queen's Park? Very small. Unfortunately, unlike the federal guys who have the gold paid pensions, <laughs> ours aren't uh, described but aren't that way. Well, and don't exist so, anymore actually. Mike Harris got rid of them. That's correct. And they don't kick in right away either. Okay. So, so. Patty, you do have a pension, right? You're there 12 years. Not until I'm 55. I oh, worked on changing yet. that. Got it. Okay. Yes. So you don't, Silly me. <laughs> you don't collect it for many, 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 yeah. many years yet. But you, uh, unlike George, who was told by the Premier not to come back, you were told by the voters not to come back. That's right. How different an experience is that? Well, it is different. Uh, I mean, you're, you've just come off, in our case, we came off in one of the longest uh, election periods in recent uh, history because it was two full months through the winter. Um, and it's a very chaotic time. You have two, 15 days, in fact, to close your Hill office and uh, 28 days to close your constituency office. It's a lot of files. It's a lot of stuff after 12 and a half years to get through. And you got to deal and hopefully get your staff all hired up in other places. So it's really intense. Uh, I took off for the month of March afterwards and just got to New Zealand and Australia as far away as I could um, to just have a little breather. But uh, and, and I was fortunate in that I, I don't have children or, or maybe I'm not fortunate but um, uh, or anybody else to I don't have anybody else to support me and I, I didn't have to support anybody else. So I was able to take the advice of a guy who's a couple years older than me and an executive who said take the whole year off and I said who's gonna support me? I have a small amount of severance thankfully we did, George, and we had uh, some outplacement money, but uh, you're not really in a mindset to deal with all of that. You've been working flat out for 12 and a half years. Mm -hmm. You um, need a little bit of time to think about it. Well, you were, you lost, I guess, the, it was a minority government when you lost, right? Yeah, so 04 to 06 was a crazy time. Right, so when it's a minority government, you never really know when the next election is going to be, and right. I've heard it often said that when you lose under those circumstances, the first thing you do is start thinking about when the next election might be so you can get back in. And you did do that. Um, no, actually, I prepared not to run again. And then uh, after the convention, changed my mind and decided to run again. When Stephen Dion won. Right. Um, but it, uh, and then that, of course, took like a year and a half as well. Um, so there were some sort of uh, lost years there. <laughs> but, uh, and wonder? I turned down a, you know, a whole new career change because I believed in running again. So it's fine. Uh, I, thankfully, I'm young enough to recover financially and otherwise. Okay. Ken, what was your experience? Well, it's kind of like the roadrunner after you've been working 90 and 100 hour weeks uh, uh, for, uh, you know, for years and years and years and it stops and you find yourself with uh, no income, no benefits, no pension. Um, now let's just clarify because you weren't in long enough to get a pension. That's right. So people assume that because you won two elections that you uh, were set for life essentially. But uh, uh, all that aside, uh, I think the biggest impact is that you you realize that you still have to walk down that street. So uh, even though you're feeling hollow and empty, you still have to put on the front that, because uh, we've all read all the motivational books that say, you know, you can do this again. And, you know, it's Abraham Lincoln ran 27 times before he <laughs> became president. And That's right. Look at look how many times Churchill won and go, yeah, all right, forget it. This isn't th this isn't Thunder Bay. This is so. Okay, let's actually. That's a good place to follow up because, I, I you know, there's 22 ridings in the city in which we're now, doing this program, and you know, I hate to say it, but the fact is some of them could lose and no one would know it, right? You can't very well lose your seat in Thunder Bay and not have people know it, right? It's it's not anything you can do anonymously. Everybody knew who the mayor was and they knew who the MP was, so. Uh, basically, it's, if it's your hometown, everybody knows the open book of your life as to what has happened to you. So uh, you get a lot of sympathy, uh, you get a lot of support, but basically over time, we've all seen people who've, who've been defeated before who probably take maybe a course of feeling sorry for themselves. So right away I knew that there's no way that I'm going to start going into a coffee shop and saying I could have been a contender. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because people just, they don't want to hear the sad start right. part of it. So you have to buck up. Is that your experience? You represent a rural riding. Was that your experience too? Oh, absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, when you, 
the years that I've been doing this, you do see a, a sort of an urban and rural difference yeah. because in a rural riding, everybody knows who you were. You you're essentially lose your job on it's the, on the front page of the newspaper. They know who you were. Yeah. 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 It's like it's you're difficult. no longer... You used to be somebody. You used to well, be the somebody. Analogy, the analogy I use, if you remember the Chuck Connors show, I think it was Rifleman, where yeah. they pull him out of the fort and break his sword and <laughs> take the epaulets off his uniform. I mean, that, that, that it, it, not to make too, too big a point of it, is, is that... In my uh, experience, and I've talked to a lot of people that have, mainly people have been defeated. Um, th that's the feeling you kind of have. You are no longer any use to, to the system. I mean, and the House of Commons, I must say, has been supportive of our efforts to try and improve this, but they have an employer employee legal relationship to sever, and they are limited in terms of what they can do. So they've been very supportive in, in our actions. Uh, to try and uh, and uh, get in and, and help in this sort of thing, um, and I should point out too. One of the first things I said to to Frances when she phoned me was, "I have no money at all." <laughs> so what we've been doing, we've been doing just as volunteers. It's pro bono. It's yeah. absolutely pro bono. And the uh, we here in this case is your association is Frances and I, and and some support from the Canadian Association of Former Parliamentarians, who uh, who are getting more active in it. Uh, to see, so you know, you 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 really are no use to the to your to, in some cases your party at all. Uh, Why it, are you no use to the party? Well, you're no longer an MP. Uh, in some cases, it, when we talk to, to to whips, they will sometimes say that defeated MPs are a problem. Uh, the uh, the lobby community, which I now am a, am a member of, I mean, when you're an MP, boy, you everybody wants a piece of you. It's a business. And all of a sudden, you you are no longer of value to the to let, those. Let pieces. me follow up with Patty on that, because presumably, after twelve and a half years in, you've got a Rolodex, you've got people you can count on, you've got sources of fundraising. Isn't the party interested in all of that, even though you're not the MP anymore? Uh, well, they were because we were having a leadership, so I was uh, pursued by all of the candidates. Um, but Steve, I use some of the settlement funds that we were given to do actually a, a program at one of the. Uh, in Toronto, a company like um, like Francis runs, and that was really helpful to be able to see that I do actually have a Rolodex. There is a pretty good story. I do have a set of skills that are, I can offer to companies and, and create that next career on. Um, I think it's small. Again, in smaller towns, it might be a little harder. Burlington is a small town in some ways. Uh, you know, I was hit up for the United Way to start volunteering for them and to do a whole bunch of things locally. I'm still called for help every so often. Um, you mean they, by constituents? Constituents who say, but I'm calling you because you're my MP. <laughs> I haven't been for four and a half years, <laughs> but I can give you some advice on what you might want to do. I mean, I still try and be nice to people, um, but it is, uh, it's stunning, actually. Um, uh, George, it, you've been strange. out of public life 25 years. I get the same calls, <laughs> no different. Still call, you? <laughs> still call me, <laughs> thank me for number. things, <laughs> ask me to do things. I'm on everybody's volunteer list. Uh, I still get, you'll get those always, please send money to every party <laughs> since I've supported many different uh, individuals. So you're always on somebody's want list. You, and your whole family takes the, the beating as well. You're, you're, there are friends that disappear that yes. were there. Your wife's best friends are no longer some of her best friends. My best friends are no longer my best friends. What and why is that? I, I'm no use to them. As a politician, I was some use. I was a, a zenith uh, heading to a peak that was somewhat useful. Same people join your campaigns. They disappear when you are no longer any use to them. It's, it's startling. You realize that's going to happen, but you don't see it that it should happen. Some of these people are really truly individuals that are friendly. Francis, what's the one thing that ex-politicians that you see seem most ill-equipped for as they try to make that transition from the phone always rings to the phone never rings? It's that time. It, it's trying to decide what am I going to do next. Patty, you talked about being given advice to leave. Just go and do something else for a year. That's excellent advice. Yeah, um, uh, you need to get some distance from it all. Yep. Um, it's, a, it's an all-encompassing thing that you guys have done for a number of years. It's very different with an executive. They can go down Bay Street, they can go to another city and pretty much dust off their skills and apply them somewhere else. It, quite often, unless you're running again, you're going to do something very different. You've got to rethink of yourself. You've got to repackage yourself. It's very different from but politicians. But it's also that you, I guess you never know when it's really over. I mean, if you've lost after Tricky. only four years, you can't be thinking, well, I guess my political career is over. Well, especially, uh, I'd been in uh, politics since I was like 27. So you were the mayor as well. And, and a councillor before that. So uh, when you get into that pace of doing things as an MP in, and in a democracy, and rightly so, uh, the, at midnight of the day you're defeated, you, that's it. You have 
you uh, got to get your own sign down the next couple of days and you, you are off the payroll and the next MP is, even though he's not sworn in yet, he's the MP. So it's, there's no... But this advice that as soon as you know you've lost, move on. Think about something else you're going to do for a year. Could you do that? It's kind of like the road runner. You're, you're going mm -hmm. 100 miles an hour and your feet are still going. It so takes a while. That. Yeah. Well, that's it's why only I, until yeah. you hit the, hit the ground after and your feet are still going that you realize, yes, this is over. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide whether you're going to mope or whether you're going to uh, pick yourself up you and get say back Benny? in the race. Well, uh, so I spent the month packing and boxing and moving instead of, and consoling everybody and saying, please stop crying on my shoulder. Um, but <laughs> it'll be okay, it'll be okay. Um, but it, uh, but getting out of the country certainly helped a lot. And, and then I went uh, to uh, a cousin's wedding in Ireland in the month of May and, mm. and did some stuff with some friends and was asked to go to Ethiopia and help uh, change the mm. committee process there. And it was really great because I bumped into John Bosley who'd been the speaker for many years, mm -hmm. and someone asked him in front of, you know, I thought it was going to be all fine, it was all going to be great, I'm, you know, this is just a great trip. And he, somebody said to him, uh, how long did it take you to get over it? And he said, honestly, like 18 months? <laughs> and I said, oh, isn't that interesting? Because I thought he would be more like, you know, this super executive type, and so it was comforting to know. And I think that's the value of what you guys bring, too, is making sure that people understand everybody's been through this. And it's... Um, it's okay to, to feel the loss and to and you, and you're you're so overwhelmed by the set of decisions that you have to make. Are you going to do this? Are you going to do that? What are you going to do with these things? That it's really helpful to have somebody that you can call every so often and say, okay, so what else? What are the other deadlines that are coming up? And what else do I need to do before, you know, options run out right. in terms of some of the Actually, Steve, I should just add because I've done a number of these shows. Some of them were phoning, and if people are shaking their fist at the, at the TV, thinking these people already get enough, they don't need any more. We're not talking about Re, uh, about money. putting money, money. in this. No. Um, we're talking about taking the resources that currently exist and using them in a more efficient way. And, and, what's, and why are we talking about that? Because a lot of this 18 months, one year, two years that people go through in transition, they're not contributing anything uh, that they could be to society. So I, I yeah. see it as a waste. And I see it as a, a, a something that, we, that, that, that I felt we could do something about. I mean, if we can take that transition period, it's going to be tough. I mean, you're talking about, you know, certain types of people get into politics. They're not, they don't take losing well. <laughs> uh, so you're not going to eliminate it all. But there are things that can be done that we can take from industry that, that makes it so the transition time between your political life to when you're back on your feet in, in, uh, in uh, society, shrink it down. And that's all we're trying to do. We're not, at, we're not saying that, that these people are any worse off than anybody else, but it's a sector that, that has not looked at these issues mm -hmm. to the same extent that we, that we see in the private sector. Ken? People assume because you've been in the, that limelight that you're stronger as an individual, that you can sustain the shot, yeah. and that to many people, well, you've stood down the crowd, you've battled, you've done the debates and the tough things, uh, no one could ever assume that you could be wrecked inside from something that you've given your life to. So they assume that you're not hurting. And but you were. Be oh, yeah, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you are. You do. When did you lose? Uh, in 19, uh, 2008. It's 2008, last yes. election. Yes. Are you over it yet? Yes. When did you get over it? Uh, At what point did you say, I'm over it now? It took, I would say, at least a year before I really, uh, really had figured out that, uh, yeah, I've got l lots, to, uh, lots to contribute. Much in the same way as Patty, is the way people were still coming to me, half of them still thought I was the mayor. Uh, <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> Which was two jobs ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but they were coming to me with, and I was guiding them through processes and doing a lot of pro bono work and, and basically realizing that I still had lots to offer and I really, the well filled up again kind of on its own, mm -hmm. but mostly because the community came to rely on me again, which told me that I was needed somewhere. So and you appreciated that. that. that yeah. yeah. George, you wanted to add? Yeah, very much like uh, sports, a quarterback. Once they're finished, you're finished. Politicians are the same thing now. Some of them go back to municipal politics and get a little job there. Not that the mayor's job is little, but that some enter that. The people think you are going to re-enter. They mm. don't come to you because you are. When you go for job interviews, uh, they won't hire you because you are this party and somebody thinks you belong to that party. Therefore, you have now reduced your activity level there. 
uh, all the comments that are going around the table apply whether it's provincial or federal. Same mm -hmm. things well, take place. Ask Patty about that. Uh, who's the liberal candidate in Burlington for the next election? Federally or provincial? Federally. Uh, we don't have one right so now. So I'm guessing that a couple of people probably come up to you and said, hey, Patty, you're running again? Am I running for MP? Am I running for MPP? Am I running for mayor? Um, it, it's MD. sort of flattering um, <laughs> that everybody wants me to run. I, I actually, uh, I think it is flattering. Um, but you never heart, get away from it. Right, but, you know, Steve, I think the one thing that this show, and, and to Joe's point about, um, you know, so what? They had a great time. They did interesting things. Get over it. Cry babies. Lots of people lose their jobs. I think the thing is that if we can bring a better level of respect to the job and appreciate that people going in take a lot of risks and people coming out need some, uh, you know, that there should be some process and that they should be respected for the skills and the passion they brought to things. And I was recounting that when I was elected in 93, it was right before Remembrance Day. So my first official event was Remembrance Day and I kept saying, but the previous MP was a veteran. He should be laying the wreath. And they were saying, no, you're the MP now. This is a really important ceremony. But out of respect, shouldn't we have him? <laughs> they were saying, buck up, girl. You know, and, and, and you know, what are you supposed to do? So I think if we can actually learn to respect each other and learn that people are going to be in and out and actually you know, recognize their skills instead of saying, you know, you're a dirty conservative or liberal or whatever, um, we might actually get more people to enter the race in, in the first place and get good quality. Mm -hmm. Francis, how many people do you think run again because that's how they cope with losing the last time? And, and it's also what they know. It's what they know. It's what they know. Yeah. Um, trying to re-enter or, try, or going into the, the, um, the private world. I know that a lot of folks have a hard time getting to know technology, the new technology. You've had staff uh, for so many years. You've had people do, you know, do things and technology has changed. So email, doing a resume, some pretty basic things is tough. I guess so. if you've been in for 20 years and you lose your job, mm. you, first of all, you got to learn how to drive a car again if you're a cabinet Very minister, because you haven't had to drive. <laughs> <laughs> right? Very true. Uh, don't use you emails in capital you, letters. You, yeah. <laughs> you don't may never send. Don't press send, send too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you have to carry money again for the first time, don't you? But, but Steve, to your point about running again, one of the structural issues that, that, that we're trying to get the Board of Internal Economy, which is the group within the uh, House of Commons that will decide these matters, is um, some of the, the assistance that's available to defeated MPs is it's got a time limit on it. Yeah. And if your coping mechanism is I'm running again, then you're, then you, then you're not interested mm -hmm. in that stuff because mm -hmm. I'm going to run again and win. Um, and it's the same problem we face with sitting MPs. Nobody ever thinks they're going to lose. So one of the... How can they possibly think that way? I mean, well, don't they look around? Well, well they, People it, lose all the time? Well, other people are going to lose, but not them. I mean, this Plus is how it goes. You, I mean, you really have to be in the headspace yeah. of, I'm going to win. Yeah. You, you have to. You have to carry a whole team of people that are going to keep working. They're not going to work for you if you keep saying what it might lose. So the it's idea of getting ahead of it and, yeah, and dealing with them when they're MPs about your life after politics, mm -hmm. it's tough. They don't want to think about it. Two, they, like we, we made the mistake one time of trying to plan a workshop, but sitting MPs won't go to anything that suggests mm -hmm. they're thinking about retiring oh, because yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the vultures mm -hmm. will go, that they want their job yeah. are there. So, I mean, we're learning as we go, but one of the things that, that we've got to do is we've got to get in on the orientation side, at the front end, and say to these people, look, never ever put yourself in a position where you think politics owes you anything. And here's the statistics about Canada has one of the, 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 the most turnover mm -hmm. of its politicians. Um, and get them to start thinking about, yes, mm -hmm. d maximize your time here, but don't think that this thing is going to last forever because they're, they're, mm -hmm. you're going to have to transition at some point. The days of career politicians are just dwindling. Well, they're the exception. They're the exception. You wanted to say, Francis? I'd like to see some mentoring going on with folks that have left, that have the experience, um, and stay connected with, uh, with MPs and MPPs that are in office. Um, so ex-MPs, mentoring, ones who are in there right uh, now? Just, yeah, just you know, realize it will end. But to uh, Joe's point, if you're in there and all of your brain cells have to be occupied on winning and holding the seat, are you going to allow for somebody who's I, out to spend I, some time with you? I think it's you? healthier if you do. I think it's healthier if you just remember who you are, that you're not the role, you're a person. It is a gift of time. Yeah. When you think about it all, you, you're on the bottom of that cliff now. Mm -hmm. So you have time that you never had before. I mean, for all of us who'd been in it for so many years, always, your weeks are long. And you, mm -hmm. you are always an MP. You are always an elected representative. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, uh, okay, 
you said you always wanted to take that course in computers. Well, <laughs> now you sure as heck have enough time to I do that. I took a drawing course at the Art <laughs> Center last year. It was you incredible. Did. And I took yoga. Which you'd never done before. Never done before because huh. you could never commit and you could never plan. I could never plan a vacation because you don't mm -hmm. know, especially in the minority years, there's going to be an election. Right. But you also don't have your, you know, I had a permanent social life, right? All these dinners and galas and everything else. You show up at all these events. You have meetings in the evening. You, you have to figure out what you do now <laughs> and how you can't, even if you do get a job, stay at the office all the time. You actually have to go and meet new people and, and uh, they, they, all your best friends are not necessarily <laughs> your best friends anymore. anymore. It's a bit of a shock. Mm -hmm. And you're getting a lot less invitations. Yeah. <laughs> They're not the really mail, your friends. Our mail stops. <laughs> yeah. The mail stops really quickly. Phone stops ringing, mail stops coming in. Your friends aren't your friends. But it's still it's the best job out. in the world to go for, and yes. I encourage people yes. to run for office. Isn't that funny? You all yeah. say that. And I, you know, yeah. I must confess, there must be a lot of people scratching their heads. You've heard Premier Davis say it. Yeah. Worst day and the best day. Yeah. yeah. Not any way comparable. And the line is, just to clarify. The <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. I know the line. You know the line. The I know the line. The, the worst day in the private sector. sector. Yeah. No, the best day in the private, private sector. sector is not as good as the worst day in, the, in public That's life. That's right. And yeah. actually, to that point, mm -hmm. I, uh, I really appreciated reading your book, which I you know, managed to unpack some of my stuff mm -hmm. and found uh, the dark side, and, and it was helpful. And someone said to me, are you nuts reading that book right now? Are you trying <laughs> to like, you know, split your wrists or something? I said, no, but it's actually helpful to remember people have lost and won. And a lot of federal cabinet ministers in the Trudeau uh, were in Trudeau's government and then were in Chrétien's, and, and that's okay. And I don't know why we have to say you're a dirtbag now that you're out. Um, why can't we say, hey, that was a good effort and you provided some good service. Not everybody loved me. Not everyone hated me. Maybe you should run again. Sure. Wants to see well, you can't get mm -hmm. some jobs. I would dare say you couldn't get hired by the civil service. You couldn't get hired by some corporations or some people, as I mentioned earlier that you uh, are no longer their friends because now I've discovered you belong to that other party. So mm -hmm. that's another one. Joe's comment about having it at the front end, when you come in, there's always this pep talk when you come in about, this is our party, here's how you got here, here's what we're going to do. But the same thing, by the way, I came in in minority government, they should have been having the conversation, here's what's going to have, mm -hmm. as Joe has said. And, and the further one, which is Francis's uh, game, a way of getting out. They just say, by the way, your severance pack package is here, goodbye. Mm. Um, Let me follow up, Joe, with you on, on this, because in the United States, if you're an ex-politician, uh, if you've had a decent run, you're hot stuff. You don't really have to look around too much for a job. You're but, also fairly wealthy. You're, okay, <laughs> that too. Yeah. In, in Canada, I remember talking to Paul Dick about this, who you probably yeah. remember, the conservative yeah. MP, who ran a $6 billion ministry, supplying services, and when his career was over, he thought that might you know, the skills needed to run a $6 billion bureaucracy might be helpful in finding a job somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, like, wh why is it the private sector in this country seems to yeah. regard skills a a acquired in public life so insignificantly? It, it may be part of this cynicism that just seems to be, cre be creeping into the, into the system, I don't know. And, and, and in fairness, it's, it's not that they don't have marketable skills. It's there's a disconnect between what they think is, is marketable on the street and what actually is. So one of the challenges with the, with the transition process is to, is to make sure they understand what their strengths are. And, and they're very real, some of them. But it's not a case of somebody's gonna hand you the key to the executive washroom, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And, and you have and, to stay in big cities as well. And, and, there, and in my case, I had to, I had to move to Ottawa. Uh, to take advantage of what I thought was marketable in terms of what I'd learned in politics. So from you have where? to be from Brockville. From Brockville. From Brockville. So, you ha so you have to be flexible. But, it, but it's, it's really a combination of, of emotionally how people feel. I think that the, the, uh, you know, the, the, to Patty's point, the way people view politicians now isn't the way they viewed them 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, it's a case of getting somebody, dusting them off, and getting back on their feet mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. Right. That's the goal. Can I ask Francis about gender differences here? And then, Patty, okay. I want to hear from you on this as well. Any differences between women and men in terms of being former politicians and trying to readapt into normal life? I think it goes to the time in office as well, that there were a lot of differences. Um, I found uh, um, you know, a lot of women were, um, uh, you know, they were mothers and you know, daughters, and the, 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 the other parts of their life were just as important. They still had to do that as well. Mm. In a lot of cases, their health took a backseat. Mm -hmm. mm. um, what does that mean? Um, they weren't eating properly or um, exercising. I think you're being nice. I think you're saying 
everybody gets fat in public lunches. I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> you all go to, you, 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 have these, you go to these receptions and these lunches, and you drink too much, and you eat too much, and you There's know no all these time. chicken dinners. There's no yeah. time and you to never do anything exercise. else. Yeah, so it was yeah. tough. It was physically tough for a lot of women. But to, to Francis's point, I think not you, I'm, Patty. You didn't no. get fat. You're still bored <laughs> at, at the record show. Thanks, people. Yeah. Um, the uh, the um, I think to Francis's point, though, a lot of uh, moms have a tough time adjusting to being there full time, mm. especially depending on the age of when their kids arrived. There has been help uh, sometimes, uh, and and a spouse who may or may, you know they've got their own systems going. It's true for men too, but mothers are generally playing a primary role, mm. and they haven't got dinner every every night because their mom was in Ottawa. Uh, or they were in Ottawa, and there, there, there is a heck of an adjustment. Like, mom, take off. We have our own system mm. here, and uh, I think that that can be an adjustment for them. I think th the the other thing, though, that that Joe has said is that we need to recognize what our skills are that are marketable. Mm. But I think the flip side is true too. I think the people evaluating us as prospective hires need to recognize that there are a whole heck of a lot of skills that that we have by virtue of the jobs that we've had, by way of information that's flowing. The private sector doesn't recognize that. No. Why not is that? as much as it should. Why not? You um, cut ribbons, you dig holes, you they don't turn see, sod, yeah. you shake hands. That's what they uh, see. Yeah. Yes. They that's the public persona of, they don't know of what the individual. The secretary does. They don't oh, really yeah. know what goes on. They don't know uh, that Paul Dick had a, a lot of responsibility, for instance, and that um, he can bring a lot of multitasking uh, to the to bear on whatever the next job is, and that he knows how to motivate a whole group of people to keep working mm. for the same goal. There's a whole bunch of things. I actually had the chance to meet Glenn Clark, uh, when, who was working for Jim Pattison after I'd lost him. Former premier of BC. Former premier, mm -hmm. and you know Pattison had recognized this guy had a lot to bring to the table. Even and though he was him. a new Democrat, he hired him. That's right. And he and he think of an run. He finished fellows. his term in sort of a little bit of controversy yeah. there. Yeah. Um, but he said, you know what, this guy does have something to offer and he can be helpful mm. to the team. The you other know, per persona is our playpen, whether it's Parliament or Queen's Park, is not very endearing to the public. So if that's another persona that politicians give off, it, it's not a very good one. Okay, and parties but, don't recognize people across party lines, so they won't appoint somebody who's been in the opposing. I mean, there's no reason why Stephen Harper shouldn't recognize that Joe Jordan and Ken Boschkoff have great skills and would provide good service. So, um, but, but they won't. They would never then, appoint a liberal. Yeah, you, there's yeah. only enough Senate seats. <laughs> <laughs> <There's> only <laughs> so many. Every now and then, Jean Chrétien would hire a token Tory. Just Absolutely. Or Paul Martin yes. put Kim yes. Siegel in the Senate. You know, this is a token. In fact, he gave Kim then. Campbell a job as a consul yes, general did. in L.A. Chrétien did, yes. But they're all looked after. Premiers and prime ministers are looked mm -hmm. after. Once well, you, it's like the linebacker versus the quarterback. The quarterback mm -hmm. gets TV commercials. John and gets Cameron, Nova Scotia premier. He wasn't looked after. Well, they're not all looked after. Yeah, okay, point. okay, more so yeah. than the, the the backbench or even yeah. other cabinet yeah. ministers. That is true. Okay, so let's try, Joe. We, what do we got? Five minutes left here. Let's have a bit of an adult conversation, as people are fond of saying nowadays, on how you want both the public to kind of react to what you're trying to lay forward here today, and how you'd like politics, official politics, to kind of react going forward. What's the plan? Okay. Well, the, the first thing is that we're not asking for anything other than what's already out there. And I, and I keep saying that because I've been through this before. Um, I know that there's gonna be no parades in, in Francis is my honor for, for taking this on. But uh, uh, I think the thing is, is that people need to understand that the, what they think is the political life um, is not the reality. Uh, you, and until you've done it, it, it's one of those things where you can't really explain it to somebody. But it, it, if you're in, an, in a minority situation or you're in a riding that, that you won by 55 seats, I mean, you go to the opening of a drawer. I mean, you have got to be on, on your game 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And people say that, but they, it, until you've done it, the stress level is very, very, very high. Now, why do you do that? You know that it's the leader's popularity overwhelmingly that's going to determine whether you've got well, it. They, they didn't hate Patty Torsney. They, yeah. like they didn't like your leader. Sorry. I but but you, can't, you can't let it go. I mean, you, you've got to try. Yeah. You've got to put out the effort. You've got to get the 5 to 7 percent. That's a local MP. So, yeah. you have so to get it's it. a case of, of that's the life that these people lead. Um, you know, they're not looking for sympathy, they're not looking for praise, but I think that this, this automatic uh, assumption that they don't have a transition problem, I, think, I, don't, I don't think that serves anybody's interest. Because as I say, there's a lot of very highly skilled people that spend too long making this transition. Let's shorten it up, let's get people back to, uh, to being very, very useful and able, people have a lot of things to contribute. I just don't like to see you know, the one year, the two year or, or five years of somebody that just is in the wilderness because they haven't been able to figure out 
this transition from, from one, uh, public to private. One name we do have to mention before this hour is up is a guy named Hans Degler, Degler. who, you know, admittedly had problems of depression and, you know, probably mental illness and this kind of thing, but who was an Ontario MPP who won one election and then lost the next election and killed himself. Just he, before his uh, six-month severance. And, and there was a fire drill that day in the House of Commons in the middle of question period. It was the weirdest thing, and we were all out on the street. And I'd known Hans because I'd worked provincially. And it just made me so angry that he felt that no one would hire him, that he had spent six months beating the bushes. And it really gave me cause to think a lot. And there was a lot of mentoring between colleagues in the middle of the night because everyone was still burning up their blackberries. Um, as you, I couldn't sleep for the first uh, month, and you know we were all supporting each other, and and that made a huge difference. But it it that had a huge impact on me as a young MP. He used to talk about wearing an invisible tattoo. The fact yeah. that he was an ex-politician meant he was tainted goods for some reason. And he, and he was an extremely accomplished. He was a do he was a PhD. Yeah. Of Ken, that that humbling that comes from being defeated in office when you think you've really been doing your best. Uh, uh, you have to make the opportunity a learning learning curve for you and it it also is a, a kind of a the most empathetic thing that can happen to you because all of a sudden it, many of the people who are coming to you for help unemployed uh, people whose benefits had run out all of a sudden you are in the same boat mm. and uh, it really is a it's a great leveler and well, I, I found it a you know I, I still am finding it. <laughs> 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 I'll give you my number. <laughs> do, 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 we don't have a, I think there's a couch over yeah. here. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm good. I'll tell you. Sit beside Frank. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we've, we've got, just in our last minute here, let, and George will bring you in on this, because we don't know when the next federal election is going to be, but we do know there's going to be an Ontario election a year and one month from now. Yes. And yeah. that means there's going to be a bunch of unemployed MPPs yes. at this time next year. Any advice you want to give them? I would tell them to one... Uh, visit quickly the Ontario Association of Former Parliamentarians in Derwin Shea, the same group as federally and it has an international body, uh, that you have to learn that, by the way, it's nothing that is basically you, it has to do with your leader. The coattails get shorter and shorter and we have more and more just leadership contests. Uh, the 5%, whatever it is that you bring locally to it, is just too small to give you that confidence. I know it's a negative thing to go into a a campaign with that over your head that by the way I might lose but it's a, it's a fact you got to be ready yeah. you always have two speeches but well. Steve the most important thing is to be uh, kind to former parliamentarians when you see them <laughs> and still people should enter the race that's good. And there's light at the end of the tunnel. That's there right. is light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. We're all gainfully. It's good of, yeah, I was going to say, you all seem like you're doing okay. Yeah. So that's good news. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming in and sharing your thoughts with us today. Patty Torsney, uh, bookended by Ken Boschkoff and George Taylor. And on the other side of the table, Francis Campouris and Joe Jordan. Thanks so much, Thank everybody. You.